Hi, this channel is about um, doing things that are not in the manual. I'm rebuilding a TR6 engine, and uh, there's a variety of things that, you, that aren't just in the manual. Some of what we'll talk about today is, but these are things that I learned. Uh, if you um, learned something, if you enjoyed this video, I appreciate it. If you'd like it, uh, subscribe. It encourages me to do more. So today what we're going to look at is the machine shop work. So my side loading rig makes a really nice way to unload the block from the machine shop. It just came back. I had a, it's, the reason it's so late at night is uh, I had a front tire blow out on the highway and uh, we ended up spending an hour and a half mucking around with that. So uh, anyway, just barely getting home. I just side mounted this thing and I'll be able to pull it right off the uh, back of the tailgate of my truck and uh, and into the shop so I'm um, glad that I I made this uh, arrangement like everything else in the modern world it seems that the the new processes don't do as well as the old here's the uh, I'm on my way working around the block with a wire wheel uh, to, to strip the paint off I found that a really thick uh, wire wheel where is it here we go. I found this one to work the best. A thinner one, a less stiff one, didn't do much. Um, but the, the hot tanking, the, the, the last time I had a block hot tanked was in the 70s, and uh, it came back completely nice and clean. The modern hot tanking process didn't do this uh, well. So I sealed up the block. Uh, this is after it's back from the machine shop. I sealed up the block, uh, putting the galley plugs back in. Um, sealing all the surfaces uh, and so on. This side I've already done. The previous owner had POR 15 it, and it was, I think, and it's still got POR 15 in the in here, which is really tough to get out. Um, so this block, this side of the block, took me a long time to get it to this point, um, and I'm still, I've still got bits in here. Um, this side. Uh, is, is going much faster. I don't think this is PR15. I think this is regular paint. Uh, uh, it, it, it did have rust under here. It had rust under here as well that, the, that this is pulling off. I am going to really clean this block thoroughly again. Because I'm not happy about having to do this after it's been in the machine shop. This is another abrasive style pad that I've been using on bits and pieces of it. So anyway, um, quite a bit of work here to do something and that uh, and I'm out of my old style paint stripper which would have taken this right off so I'm having to do this by hand so a lot of work so lesson learned is uh, do this before you send it to the machine shop don't 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 expect the machine shop to clean it up for you uh, here's the uh, Here's the uh, the list of things that we did. We're not going to go over the cylinder head today, but instead we're going to look at, uh, instead uh, we, we reboard the block, uh, we deck the block, we align hound it, we board the cam tunnel. He also cleaned and magnifluxed the block. Um, and we'll talk about the rods and so on uh, later. We see that he, he looked, got the cylinder, di cylinder diameter 2.9610. He noted that number six cylinder is five under. That's because the piston uh, is a little bit uh, uh, is a little bit small. Uh, his he measured the piston sizes and he he did a clearance of uh, of two thousandths of an inch. He changed the deck height, uh, CC the piston, and so on. We'll talk about that, those later. But what I'd like to do today is simply talk about the pistons. And and the and the boreholes, and these and, and a little bit about these recesses and the clearance. So, uh, I did an evaluation of this block before, and I took a reading with a dial bore gauge at uh, at three locations in the piston at the at the top, at the middle, and at the bottom. And, 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 in, and in this orientation and in this orientation, and I came up with all my numbers so I could see how far in and out or spec uh, th that my bore was. Um, and I found that basically um, number three, number, number two, number three, and number five was out of spec. 
um, and so it needed to be bored over by at least uh, by at least 20 over which is what I had guessed and uh, my uh, machine shop uh, validated that in fact uh, did he say what it was supposed to be here but he didn't write it down on here but you can see that by the uh, the 20 over pistons that I was right so uh, that's always nice to be validated so what I did was now I came in and I remeasured all of these cylinders the same way. Here's the dial bore gauge, and you can, but you basically set it up and rock it and find the, the, the maximum travel and set it. And, and here I, I just set it to the 20, uh, is the closest one. Uh, and, and, and I checked that all the way, all the way across, um, going all three positions, all, both orientations. And again, number six was a little bit uh, was a little bit small. You saw it was 20 uh, uh, before, and you can see on this one uh, it goes a little little beyond, just a tiny bit beyond. Uh, this the the calibration of this only goes um, to by the thousandth and the half, uh, by the ten thousandth, uh, by the five ten thousandths. So it's really not accurate enough to do this. It's just close enough for, uh, for me to check it and, and to have a little fun with this. So what you do, then there's an easier way to do this as far as finding out what our specification is and what we're aiming for is a gap between the cylinder wall and the piston. We want the specifications 18 to 22, 10 thousandths. And I got that from the county pistons came the, um, this came with the county pistons and it says uh, all pistons should be measured to determine the biggest diameter at 90 degrees to the pin axis so here we have the pin axis and you need to be careful because that'll come out so you need to measure it right here at 90 degrees to that and it says also that usually it's under the oil control ring is the widest diameter depending on the piston I found on these it's actually way down on here on the skirt is the widest diameter. So what I did was I put my my uh, two to three inch micrometer in a vise with a, with a little protection and uh, and then I measured each of the pistons and I just wrote on the top of the piston what the size was and you'll see that these were um, and this micrometer by the way when you're buying a micrometer if it has these lines here you'll know it's good to the ten thousandth most of them are just good to the thousandth so so here's my measurements to the ten thousandth and you notice that these two are different um, they're they're uh, smaller this one significantly and this is the machine shop wrote number six uh, this goes in number the number six cylinder bore and he honed those cylinders to size to match the clearance, to, to, to create the clearance on these pistons, again from um, 18 ten thousandths to 22 ten thousandths. So I took all the measurements of these pistons, I took all the measurements of the cylinders, and I put them down, and, uh, and we have the bore, piston diameter, and the cylinder diameter. And again, I, that's a close guess because my dial bore gauge is not accurate to the ten thousandth. And I found my clearances went from 19 to 22 ten thousandths. So I'm very happy about that. It looks like uh, it looks like uh, my clearance is, is good here. So I had him deck the block, and I only chose to deck the block for flatness, so you get a good ceiling surface. You can deck the block and set zero zero um, clearance on the pistons, and that's for more for racing. Um, if you're going to zero deck the the block, you should also have the the side the height of the pistons and the height of your connecting rods all measured too, or, or have him have him do it to place, and you have to have to adjust all that too. Uh, the purpose of zero decking is to get everything the exact. The, the biggest benefit is to get all the pistons the exact same distance um, from the crank, so that what that does is that evens out the firing balance of the engine it makes for a smoother running engine there's more information on that in uh, 
in various books like uh, Fork Stroke Performance Tuning by Graham Bell uh, and that kind of thing. So just in order to check the flatness so you get a good sealing surface, um, you need a good uh, need a good set of feeler gauges. This is a Mitotoyu, and uh, this one goes down to 15 thou. Uh, um, so with with a with, uh, with this guy and a very good rule, just check every which way uh, on your on your block. See if you can fit that uh, fit a 15 thou under there. And if and if it, you can't in any which way, check it this way. Now one interesting thing, if I check it right here, you'll see I can fit it under there, right? Why is that? Well, my machinist was very considerate and he asked me if I wanted to keep my engine number. And uh, so what he did was he stopped short of, um, he stopped short of that surface and left the engine number on there, which I'm very grateful for. The other thing to talk about now uh, at this point too is what kind of machine tools your machine shop has. This was done with a CNC machine, which is very accurate. And it also enables you to leave this edge on. If he did it with an old school grinding uh, machine, uh, it would have taken that completely off. So you want to, might want to ask your machine shop uh, which kind of tool they have. The other thing about the uh, old school grinding ones, if they haven't, uh, if they haven't trued up their their uh, equipment in a long time, you can actually end up with a block that's worse than the one that uh, that you gave them. So uh, anyway, so be sure to evaluate and check for flatness. Mine checked out is just nice all the way, every which way it is nice. Checking this this way. and across like this and so on so i'm happy with that it's nice and flat should make a good sealing surface for the head gasket the other thing my machinist was quite quite proud of was the fact he does have a cnc boring machine too and uh, why is that important compared to the old school boring machines we said he can get a completely 90 degree angle this way and this way to the crank get it get them completely straight and you can't guarantee that with the old school boring machine so this block should be very square between this surface and the board this should be a complete a very nice 90 degree angle all the way across so it is worthwhile asking your machinist what kind of machines they run there it is there's a little bit of rust still on this head and my machinist talked to me about that he said he didn't feel that it really needed to, to be ground down more than that to get a good seal. If he kept grinding down, where does he stop? That kind of thing. So um, anyway, so if you see a little bit of that and it was far enough away from the, from the ceiling surfaces that uh, he, f he felt it would be okay. Um, that's a little bit of tape residue from the tape I had on there. Now the next thing on the bore to be concerned about is this... Uh, is this recess and I've actually got some outstanding questions to people he decked this block he shaved this block a little bit uh, because it was a little bit out of out of uh, square and so he took a, he took a skim coat on it and he had to re cut these recesses and these recesses are important if your head gasket if you have the, the style of head gasket and head that um, has these fire rings in it. If you have the fire rings in it, you need to have the recesses. The question then is how, oh, I, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the pan head gasket, sorry. This is a pan head gasket. This has got a, 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 a coating or surface on it uh, that as it heat cycles, it bonds to the, uh, to the block and to the head from what I understand. So you know, I'm not gonna use any gasket sealer on this at all because it'll wreck that that coating. Um, if this if you don't have the recesses, you want to get a different style of of uh, head gasket. You need to be careful uh, that you don't get them mixed up or you'll end up with leaks. So, um, alrighty. So I went ahead and measured this. How did I do that? Well. I can't do it one-handed, but uh, basically I took a straight edge 
and I put it ag against the surface here and then tried different um, sizes of feeler gauges. And you can actually, if it's too big, it'll actually rock on the, fe rock on the feeler gauge. Um, that's one way to do it, but you just try it. And I found that these, uh, these recesses are all 24, um, 24 10 thousandths of an inch uh, deep. So I will ha have to, uh, excuse me, 20. I found that these recesses are all 24 thousandths of an inch deep. Now, I don't have any way of knowing if that is correct. I forgot to measure it before I sent it out, so I don't know. I do know that um, that uh, Roger Williams' book, How to Restore the Triumph TR-60, is the only place where I found anything about it. And it says the, uh, that a recessed block has a machine resource around the top of each bore. As shown here, the depth of the recess is only about uh, 15 thousandths. It's essential to use the correct recess gasket with a small with the small rear identification tag, and you can see it on the left side. So uh, minor 24, this says 15. I've seen on forums it says 20. I don't know. Um, I've got some questions out on the forum. If anybody has that spec, uh, we'll find out. I'm a little concerned. I did ask my machine shop how he determined it would be at 24. He's familiar with TR6 engines, so. That should be good. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do for now. Uh, we'll cover uh, the rest of it in, in, in the next clip. Something I did here too is you notice the miscellaneous labor. I have measure lifters and clearance. Um, number 12 hole is, is, is 5 thousandths plus. Um, one of the things I did, if, if you look at my measuring, evaluating the, um, uh, the cam where uh, I did a section on lifters and and if you notice here if you there's a, a line going through that lifter uh, this is the number 12 lifter and it's a little bit dished and so I had him measure the uh, measure the bores uh, all the way th through and he discovered that one of them was a little off and he and he he also measured the lifters and he marked which lifters should be done he also honed some of those uh, just to try to make sure that they turn properly and there, and there weren't many problems. There's, I don't know if you need to do that, but I, I did it anyway. And uh, I'm not going to check his measurements there. Um, I'm just going because to, the, because of the tolerance, I don't have a bore gauge. It'll go that small with that kind of tolerance. So I'm just going to trust that he did it right. My machinist said he cleaned out the oil galley. What we're going to do is take a boroscope and uh, check and see how true that is. So let's go ahead and go in the galley. Now you see that stuff on the left, those nibs? That is bad. That shouldn't be there. And as we go through and we see that nib up at 11 o'clock there, that nib, um, 1030, that is bad. That will go right to, that's a little piece of, may, maybe left over from the sheening, I don't know. Here's some rust. You see the rust uh, color on the sides. Uh, let's keep going, uh, keep going, it's hard to see there, still rust along the edges, uh, a little bit of rust, there's a nib up at 12 o'clock uh, that we went by, uh, let's keep on going, take a look, uh, oh, there's a, there's a, oh, uh, no, it's going by a little too fast, there's some nibs there. Um, and some rust again, uh, and see the see the rust around the circles, and you can see a lot of little bits and pieces around the edges. Um, that's not good, and so we're going to go ahead and, and clean this out. So here's the cylinder head back from the machine shop, and he needed all the pieces to do the work. I had a three-angle valve grind done on the cylinder head and that is uh, that improves the flow uh, of the gases in and out of the uh, out of the chambers out of the, uh, through the through the valves um, he needed in order to assemble this correctly he needed the springs 
because he set the spring pressure and the spring height and checked it all. And there's some question as to, as to whether or not it needed the little um, spring um, uh, washers down here. And he and Ted at TSI uh, spoke and they worked it through as to what was needed and so on. Uh, he also had his own, he had his preference for his own exhaust seats. I had the exhaust seats put in this. Some people say, do you, you don't need to do that if you're using stainless valves. Some people do. My machinist is a big believer in them. So I, I went ahead and had them all installed here. Um, one thing that I didn't do, I was thinking about having this head ported. And... Um, and I didn't, the, the guy that I, I sent this to didn't, doesn't do porting. I'm thinking I might ship this off and have it ported. The um, competition preparation manual and other man, other resources tell me I can gain maybe 15% um, maybe or 15 horsepower uh, from the porting alone, that that's one, one of the biggest improvements that you can do. So I haven't decided yet uh, what I'm going to do. One thing that you should do is if you're going to have it ported, um, you should uh, do it before you have all this work done because now if I have it ported it's going to change the combustion chamber volume inside because they do some work on the on the combustion chamber too. It's going to change that volume and now my CCing isn't right, my compression isn't right so they might have to skim the head just a little bit more and CC it again. Oh I wanted to say the same thing about the uh, surfaces on the cylinder head that I said about the block uh, if you have this ground on an old style machine shop without the, without the, if it's this is sanded on the intake manifold, intake and exhaust manifold surface, I had a heck of a time sealing uh, up uh, that side on a, on a, uh, on a different car because the machine shop didn't quite get it flat and straight. Check it for flat and straight the same way you did the block. Uh, CNC machine is the way to go if you can if you can have a machine shop that does it that way So you can uh, do a little research for yourself on the, on the different aspects of machine shop work that I brought up I'm going to point you to this website motion uh, 24527 Dale um, as far as uh, the CNC machine and let's take a look at a few videos you should watch. For the issue with putting bronze exhaust guides versus liners, I have liners put in mine. Uh, you might take a look at, um, at this particular um, video to show why he does it the way he does. Uh, there's some TR6 ones, TR6 deck milling and truing on the uh, CNC machine. You should watch that one. Uh, the line boring for cam bearings for the TR6. You should also watch that one. Uh, TR6 uh, cylinder uh, taper is another good one. Um, and, the, and the CNC process as a whole, issues with head resurfacing. Look at this one. Um, Here's for a TR6 milling the head and the gasket counterbores, those recesses, and how he does it uh, with the CNC machine. Cylinder boring um, with the uh, CNC machine and the difference. Dale at Motion24527 on YouTube. So what did it cost to do the cylinder head? It was uh, $400 total um, for doing the, um, the the guide liners. Now he, he does liners um, which are d different than, um, th than the other kind and, and we'll go into that later. He installed those six exhaust valves, uh, valve seats. Uh, he CC'd the chambers, he resurfaced the head you can, and he magnafluxed it. Um, you can see uh, you can see the prices as as uh, we go there. Um, and here's the cost of the parts uh, for the 12 guide liners, which he provided, the exhaust seats, and the hardened uh, spring shims that he used. Um, and the uh, seat pressure on the 
springs was 80 pounds. Now, if you're getting an adjusted, um, if you're getting an adjusted cam, if you're getting a performance cam, you want to make sure that you order the cam and the springs together because the spring, the spring uh, pressure is uh, the sp the spring force is tied directly to uh, the, the cam lift and duration, and and you need to match the springs to the and and the pressure to get the seat pressure matched to the cam so that your springs aren't too tight and it, so it's not too tight and wears the cam out or it's not too loose and your valves aren't bouncing. I didn't um, cover much on the machine shop work on the crank, but the uh, a couple of things that to be careful of. One is don't grind it any uh, more than you have to. Um, 10 over is probably the most you want to grind these cranks because you don't want to go through the, the layer of the, of the um, hardened surface on them. You can get them renitrided or so on if you so desire. Um, the other thing is that you may see, you may be tempted to polish it yourself. There's some YouTube videos on how to polish it with a shoestring and chrome polish and that kind of thing. Don't do that. There's uh, more to grinding these cranks than just getting them shiny. And you can actually wreck a crank using that, uh, that method. So anyway, um, uh, if you want to see more on, uh, on this particular crankshaft, I did do a video on balancing and, and I cover a little bit more in there. But um, get it magnafluxed, uh, get it checked, grind it the least amount possible, and then you will um, order your bearings after, your mains and your rods bearings after you have it done because you won't know what size until they um, until the machine shop tells you you'll also want to brush out and clean the the uh, oil holes in the crank as well when you get it back from the machine shop so this channel is about uh, what i learned and passing that on as i'm rebuilding um, or restoring uh, one of my triumphs and uh, this one was on the machine shop and and what happens what you what you can expect what you can get back um, questions to ask about like these recesses and the, the kinds of machines uh, that they, that they will use whether or not to do things you don't think about like that oil gallery or or uh, to uh, hone the uh, hone the tappet uh, bores so anyway, I hope this is helpful to you. Uh, if it was, uh, please like it and subscribe. It, uh, it encourages me to take the time to do these videos. Uh, also, uh, if you know something that I, I don't, like an authoritative source for the, uh, the depth of these recesses, uh, please feel free to comment and I'll try to get back to you. Thanks for watching.